Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube! My name is Sea Raptor. Today we're bringing you yet another battle report from the Japanese cruiser Regrind, this time from the bridge of Tier 8 cruiser Mogami. Mogami is one of my favorite ships in the game, but she has a very long and very troubled balance history going all the way back to the first uh, six months or so the game was in live release. And it all boils down to something that actually happened in history. If you look at the guns on this ship right now, you can see I'm running five turrets of triple-barreled guns. These are 155mm guns. This was the original armament of IJN Mogami when she was commissioned into service. But later on, later in her life, these turrets were removed and replaced with 203mm turrets, eight in the 8-inch guns of a proper heavy cruiser. The trick is, is that... Wargaming uh, opted in the game to allow you to have both of these options available to you in the tech tree. And just by virtue of the way that light cruiser guns work versus heavy cruiser guns in this game and the various penetration characteristics and fire chances of the shells and so on and so forth, both of these ships, certainly 155 Mogami as you see here, has a very, very uh, b troubled balance history in the game going all the way back to when advanced firing training and basic firing training when the game first released could affect ships with shells all the way up to 6 inches. So Mogami got a reload buff and a range buff. Uh, this was back in the days before uh, you had uh, IFHE as his captain skill, but she was a fire starter extraordinaire. I used to play the hell out of this ship way back in the day. I love this ship. Uh, she's still a lot of fun. She's simply more challenging to play now for a variety of reasons. Now, of course, IFHE does her a lot of favors. She gets more reliable damage out of her guns, especially these 155s, as you see here. But the trick is, is that now, without the ability to equip, uh, to take AFT as a captain skill for that range bonus, which was really, really big back in the day, she's capped there, you can see on the minimap, at 15.7 kilometers of range. Now, in a strictly tier 8 game, as the game I'm in right now, you see here, hey, 15.7 works. It's decent. But in a tier 10 game, when she's up tiered, that range is a real, real liability. So you gotta you gotta be careful. And you gotta stay frosty and you gotta know your maps. The other thing about this this ship that I'll I'll say as we start to get into a little bit of combat here, this map here, we're on Haven, this is a 42 by 42 map. Okay? That means that these 15 kilometer range is gonna feel better than it will on a 48 by 48 map, like say hotspot. So there are maps in the game that Mogami will feel better on, regardless of what barrel she takes. Um than others, just because the map is so much larger. So we start off here, a rare game for me, where I'm in a div, divved up with two of my clan mates here, SFNL and Sir Pounce. Pounce wanted to bust out his Enterprise, and Mogami's not known for her AA, but I thought, wow, what the hell, if it's a div mate and I need a little bit of help on AA, I can probably ask for it. Enterprise's fighters are pretty trolly. Trying to get some early fire, some early damage into this Bismarck here, as the enemy team decides to go play bumper boats. He rams the Bismarck turned out, ramming into a Molotov. Uh, another Molotov about to about to t he's about to T-bone yet another Molotov is they literally all just kind of come to a stop right there just kind of one big boat mess. But I mean while they're trying to figure out their navigation that's not my problem you guys solve that I'm gonna keep putting shells down range. One thing Mogami does really really well that I'm not gonna get to showcase in this game is Mogami slaughters destroyers. But there's only one destroyer in this game and if you're paying attention to the mini map you see that she's on the other side of the map. So, I'm going to have to focus on the other thing that Mogami does well, and that is farming damage off of big fat battleships. See here, I'm having a little bit of bumper boats action on our own team. A lot of ships clustered up right here as we start in, just trading blows on Haven. Enemy Bismarck trying to run south, trying to salvage his ship down at a third of his HP already. Just hoping to get out of here and uh, get out of here and not die. But you can see I've already turned out, right? Like, to me, there's absolutely no reason to be shoving a ship this fragile up in the face of the enemy that quickly. Just kick back, use your range as uh, the Helena bags kill number one. So now it's just a matter of there's nothing else in range. As I as I start to turn back to starboard, kind of open the uh, open the distance between me and my cap point again, move, move out towards the east. I'm, I'm literally, like, escorting my carrier, which is not something you typically find uh, this ship doing, but here I am. It's working out okay. As the enemy takes a one-ship lead here fairly early, five minutes gone. The other flank not holding up as well as we are, but then we grab it back very quickly as that Sharn horse that had pushed up into where the B-cap would be on a domination game 
does uh, does not survive his experience. So now, with my, my clanmate SFNL up here, I'm off my bow, just he seems to be soaking up a lot of fire. I'm trying to move back up, get, get into a position where I can put more shells down range and maybe draw the little occasional little bit of fire here. Now, this enemy Cleveland comes around the corner. He seems very excited. I have no idea why he thinks this is a good idea. There are about four of us up here to shoot at him, and uh, we're all going to happily oblige his mistake. Once again, you see me immediately starting to turn out there. That's kind of my default position when I play the ship. I want to be angled away, if at all possible. It's harder for enemies to make shots against you. It's harder for them to gauge your range and everything if you're angled away. You can see there, uh, New Mexico gets some good shells into that Cleveland. I'm getting some good shells into him. He's like, oops, this was a mistake. I'm going to run for some cover. Get some more, get 15 more of these beautiful six-inch shells downrange. I should bag a fire here. Yes, sir. And I'm, I'm looking at this shot. I'm like, oh, can I get some over the island? I'm trying to sneak a few over the island here, but I don't think it works. I just have to hope that fire finishes him off. He's got hard cover now. Nobody can really get shots on him, although... Pounce there with his Enterprise planes might might be able to get in there and, and uh, take care of some things. There's a little gap there that I realized too late I could have shot through, but it doesn't matter. He is going to tick out, and I am going to bag my first kill here momentarily. So again, team's not doing that badly. We're up a ship. We're up two ships now with the death of the Cleveland. As uh, an Albemarle, for, uh, enemy Albemarle has wandered into range, so we'll start working in on this guy. He's the only ship in my range at the moment, so I mean, pff, why not? SF has kind of retreated back to get some better cover. That's working out for him. He needs he needs a breather there. He's tanked a ton of damage. I can look at the map and see that Albemarle's going to have to make a turn, so I'm kind of leading him, anticipating that turn to starboard. He's firing AP at me, which is probably the right choice, but I'm not going to lie, guys. I struggle with British cruiser AP at these ranges, certainly the 8-inch AP. I seem, the the 6-inch AP just seems to perform better for reasons I cannot wrap my brain around. Albemarle is making the exact same maneuver that the Cleveland did, trying to get down this little channel, trying to escape and get out of here. But just like the Cleveland, I bag a fire right before he goes. And uh, that one's going to stick for a little while. He does get some decent damage into me right there before, as he as he ducks around the island. We get one more fire as uh, he's out of, out of sight now. Which just leaves this New Mexico and this Amagi. There's a Molotov back there, but he's out of my range. The other Molotov, the Molotov Div there, uh, he is out. So just one of the surviving Molotovs. As I decide, all right, well, the New Mexico's in range. Let's start out on this guy. But I get to take a couple of salvos there, and I realize, I'm looking at the minimap, and I'm, I'm realizing that the Amagi is continuing to push. You see, he's he's still moving up the seven lay, uh, the eight line there, excuse me. And so that gives me the opportunity to do something I haven't done yet this game, and that is to bring my torpedoes into action. As long as he keeps moving north, he's pushing into my range. He's out of my range when I fire them, right? He's 12 clicks out or whatever. But he keeps moving north. Torpedoes have a 10 kilometer range. He'll move into their range as he keeps moving up the map. In the meantime, it's just a matter of backing up my teammate here. Continue to put shells down range. Pretty solid little damage total approaching 80,000 here as we're eight and a half minutes into this battle. This is my first game back, having picked up 155 Mogami during the regrind and... Man, it's just, the, playing this ship again is like coming home. It's just such a, it's so comfortable. She's so easy to drive. It's it's a very uncomplicated ship to play. Now, that's not to say that you can't make mistakes in her, because she's very fragile, and she'll blow up on you if you're not careful. But it's not a ship that you have to spend an exhausting amount of time, like, oh, how do I outfit it, and how do I play it, and where do I put it? Man, find, you know, you've got 15 barrels of really nasty high explosive. Find something and just go and just go melt it. Just melt it. It's like playing a Helena, basically. It's, it's this is Helena before Helena was a thing. We do land one of the torpedoes there as we're all trying to get this Mogami off the. I'm sorry, this Amagi off the board. But uh, he's waited too late to try and salvage his ship, and uh, SF takes care of the problem. So now I'm starting to recalibrate here. The other New Mexico is pulled back way down the ten line. Enemy Enterprise is back there, but this Molotov has pushed up into what would be the sea cap on a domination game. I'm not sure why he's doing this. He's charging a, a Richelieu? Molotov is not a ship that I would be charging anybody in. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my Molotov. She is a ton of fun. But the thing's made of tissue paper. Like, you can HE Citadel this thing with just about, well, with lots of ships. I switch to the AP here. 
But the Molotov, to his credit, is playing a smart game and is continuing to play angles with me. The Inim Enterprise has busted out his AP bombers, and this is actually a legit threat that I have to take seriously. So not only do I put up a fighter, I pop my defensive fire as I'm trying to make these planes go away, because AP bombs can and will do horrible things to me if I give them the opportunity. As it is, I'm doing... I'm, work, I'm doing... I'm struggling to keep just my forward bearers on this Molotov. He has also switched to AP. He knows how squishy I am. And so now I'm just trying to get him off the board. I've got a really good shot here. There's one sit... Oh, oh, I got a turret I haven't used, and... Uh, but I make one mistake here. In my zealous haste, I forget he has torpedoes. That's right, kids. Molotov has four kilometer torpedoes, and I'm going to take one in the bow here for my trouble. Which means I'm stuck with this flood for a little bit. My damage control is down. As a enemy, Atlanta has kind of wandered back this direction. Now, the good thing for me is that I may be a juicy target because I'm kind of a, a cruiser that's on low HP, but we have a four-ship lead, and I've got lots of friends over here. And Atlanta is not exactly a ship built for survivability. So, between me and the Richelieu and the Helena and the Grash Bay behind me, I really am not super concerned. We just All I want to do right now is make this Helena go away. I'm continuing to move west because I want to get some cover from the guy. Great. Okay, good. He has no line of sight on me now. He has no shots over that island. Enemy team is down to just that Atlanta, the New Mexico, the North Carolina, and the Enterprise way back on the 10 line. And so now it's like, well, I can see this New Mexico. Might as well shoot at him. I mean, farming damage off of battleships is one of the things that uh, this ship does best as I snag a Confederate. North Carolina took a shot at me. I'm slowing down and turning in to try and dodge it. He snags an overpen, but that's all he gets out of it. As we sit the, sit the, uh, send the forward barrels back down range, trying to get another fire on this New Mexico. Which we do. He immediately repairs that. And as he starts to slide behind some cover, I'm just trying to get yet another fire, some more shells. Really want to really want to get this one of these fires to stick. But uh, not going to be that lucky. The Spey does me a solid and wipes out the Atlanta before he can get up here and melt me. And now, all that's left, two battleships and an aircraft carrier. Now, the North Carolina is at the extreme edge of my range, way out there at 14 and change, almost 15 kilometers. So I have to really lead these salvos. But the beauty of it is, is that as long as I can able to, you know, lead, get my lead right, I'm going to get some fires, I'm going to get some pen damage on his superstructure, because he's basically pristine. I mean, look at this. We're 13 minutes into this battle, he's barely taking any damage. He's going to start taking some now, as he's got basically my entire team is going to start shooting at him. I want the salvo on the New Mexico, but the Graf Spey wipes him out before my shells land home. So now it's just time to kick back and and farm. Farm some damage. Light all the fires, pen all the things, make this North Carolina. Sorry he was in this game. Now, one of the things that I am doing as I move down this slot here is I'm intentionally using the islands to block line of sight. This North Carolina cannot see me until I fire right there with planes up and nearby. The planes are what allows him to spot me. But when the, once the planes leave, he can't see me. Whereas I've got the spay can see him. There's enemy ah, friendly planes can see him. So I'm using island cover here to help preserve my health a little bit. Because he's already proven himself willing to take pot shot at me, right? So why give him another chance? Now, initially, I'm thinking, all right, we'll get down here. Me and the Helena, we're going to get down here and we're going to cap this thing out. This is going to happen. So I keep moving south. I'm still farming this guy because, I mean, of course, like, I'm not going to give up free damage. But it takes me a little while to realize that this North Carolina, between all of us shooting at him, he's not going to be around very long, right? Like, he's going to die. I don't think I can get shells over the island right here, so I start taking a few salvos at the Enterprise. And the lean on these is not great. I don't do a great job with these first couple of salvos trying to gauge his speed. But the bigger mistake that I make that could have cost me even more damage, and what turned out to be an otherwise decent game, is that I don't realize that the Enterprise, I'm pushing south, the Enterprise is moving the other way, He's already at my extreme, kind of the edge of my range. Before long, he's going to be moving out of my range, and I'm going to have to turn back north if I want to follow him. That's that's not going to happen. The game will end long before that becomes a, a, a problem here. So as you can see now, just the enemy Enterprise, all that's left, but he's at 15 kilometers, and he's going to start pushing away. This is, it's at this point that I realize I'm going to lose shots on him, basically, right? I start to accelerate. I try to, you know, start trying to get, around, get, get out of this cap. I want to keep my guns into the game, but it's just not going to happen. My, my teammates, uh, between the carrier, the battleship, everybody else, they're going to finish this guy off. And uh, that's that's all I'm going to get in terms of damage. But 
what a what a what a great you know welcome back game to regrinding Mogami. You know, like getting Mogami back for the first time. This is the first game back in the ship. It's like, oh yeah, I remember why I like this thing. This ship is so good, and that's why, kids. One fifty five Mogami, gone but not forgotten here in World of Warships. Guys, hope you enjoyed that one. I'll have some more uh, Mogami and Ibuki replays coming very soon. Be safe out there. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.